Stop treating teachers as clerks. There's a good starting point. Pay teachers in a manner other than the way we pay postal clerks. Well, it's your time on the job that matters the most. In fact, that's the only thing that matters. A sixth year teacher has to be worth more than a fourth year teacher. And it doesn't work that way, folks. It never has and it never will. So that's one reason to get rid of unions or at least ask them to morph into a professional association. We have a lot of suggestions here. So what's the one thing we need to do? There is no one thing. Maybe that should be the first lesson. There's no one way to school children. We have to build a system that literally puts kids ahead of the system. There's, there's a challenge for you. But I'm privileged to serve on the State Board of Education in the Sunflower State, and except for this first underlying nugget, Kansas leads the world in the success of each student, the rest of this video is my own. So I'm not representing the board. I do not represent the board in this video. These thoughts are my own. I'm a licensed teacher in Kansas with three endorsements on my license. I was first trained as an engineer, and I'm in the problem-solving business, and we need to solve some problems, and it's really not about money. As I told our Chief Justice, the Honorable Lawton Nuss of the Kansas State Supreme Court, he was wrong to make this about money. Now, maybe making the fuss over education about money will get people's attention. I'll give him credit for that. But the fixes are not more money. The fixes are to change the culture. So Kansas leads the world in the success of each student. That I can claim on behalf of the board. I was part of the vote. That is our vision. We voted on that. As I say, the rest of this is my own. So what does it mean to fix high school when we fix second grade? That's just a talking point. It really gets to stopping the practice of just moving kids along because they had another birthday. And we need to take the birthday out of the equation for math class. There are very good teachers out there in the public right now who would love to give of themselves and would not demand a lot of salary, who could work for the taxpayers as well as the children, but we refuse their entry into the classroom simply because they haven't jumped through our bureaucratic hoops. We should welcome the public back into public schools. Have retired citizens read with kids, and we do that. We, we invite retired citizens and semi-retired citizens in during reading time but we don't pay them anything. We don't even give them a hot lunch. We need to change that. Stop labeling kids by color. That would be a good thing to do. Quit labeling kids by race, either by groups or subgroups. And our special ed regimes are out of control. Special ed is, oh my goodness, it's, it really is out of control. We're putting way too many people in prison, ladies and gentlemen. Far too many end up in prison. And we have an educational system to blame for that. The individual education plans or individualized education plans or programs, IEPs, they used to be one or two pages and anybody, even a substitute teacher could come in and make sense out of it. Now the darn things are 25 pages or more in some cases. It's not useful. It's useful only to the bureaucrats, only to the special ed programs. It defeats the original intent of what IEPs were designed to do to facilitate education. Class sizes for little ones should be smaller. I like the rule of thumb of a 1.5 multiplier or 150 percent. Get rid of the free and reduced lunch program. You send your kids to school, they get lunch. Treat it the way we treat heat in the building in the winter. You send your kids to school in the winter, the building's going to have heat. You send your kids to school any time of year, food is provided regardless of how much money their folks make. I get in trouble speaking on behalf of my fellow board members because I cannot speak for the board. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the envelope here just a little bit and say that we get very high marks in Kansas for career and technical ed. And I think it's fair to say that most of my fellow board members have come around to the idea that if you're going to have a welding class, it's probably a good idea to have a welder teach it. The thing is, it's not just welding, and it's not just woodworking and auto shop. Turns out, it's good to have somebody who knows the language of mathematics to teach the language of mathematics. Professional development is a big business, 
as a teacher, I should be responsible for my professional development. I should be a professional and not simply jump through checklists to get my points so that I satisfy the bureaucracy. Does this smack of the pulpit a little bit, sing Christmas carols? Am I trying to just piss off the ACLU? No. I'm trying to bolster schools by recognizing that there are two clauses in the First Amendment related to religion, not simply the Establishment Clause, but we also have a Free Exercise Clause, and we need some help with that Free Exercise Clause. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. You want to fix schools? Read, and then read some more. Don't try to plan everything from the central planning office. It leads to shortages, from bus drivers to teachers. Amen, I say to you, amen. Calculators are part of my business. I'm a math teacher. We should keep calculators away from kindergarten through second grade. They should have no calculators. Data shows that kids learn best by holding a writing implement and writing on a piece of paper. That's how you learn arithmetic. Yes, we can embrace technology, and we need to recognize that some of our special citizens actually do better with technology. Some of our autistic children actually do better by doing math on an electronic device, an iPad or a tablet. We don't understand all the mechanisms yet, but we're working on it. Listen to parents, please. Listen to parents. The retention of our teachers should incorporate the feedback from our families. Families are important. And school choice has to be given to poor folks as well as the affluent. We've always had school choice, but for the as I say, creatively able, as well as the affluent. Poor folks need school choice too. It's unconscionable to keep poor kids locked in underperforming schools. It's a disgrace. School choice is going to be an increasing part of the landscape and it needs to happen now. High schools need more flexibility in the way they award credits. There's a lot of things we need to do. Yes, getting rid of ordinal grades, first, second, and third grade would help a lot. That's very close to taking the birthday away from the equations for math class. It's okay if that particular eight-year-old right there is going to class with those six-year-olds over there. And it's okay if that other eight-year-old is going to class with those 10-year-olds or 11-year-olds. Kids who get math quickly should be advanced quickly. We shouldn't hold them back just because, well, because we have failures in our system. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. So said Dr. King in August of 1963 in front of the Lincoln Memorial. How many more decades do we have to go before we make justice a reality for all of God's children? So I've dedicated about 10 minutes for this video. I could talk for a half hour about how to make schools work for all folks. Yeah, I could talk all day and barely repeat myself. We need to change the culture, ladies and gentlemen. And the system resists change. It's almost intractable. But I'm still optimistic. We can have great schools for all children who want it, regardless of how much money their folks make. But kids have to want it. And we have to inculcate them, instill in them the value that education matters. Learning to read well and understanding the language of mathematics are important. We can do this, but we need to make some changes. I'm Steve Roberts and I approve this message.